Welcome to the Feminine Truth Podcast with Mary Miranda, a place where you can reconnect with your wild, cyclical, and fierce truth. I am Mary Miranda, a mentor, coach, healer, and intuitive. I guide women on a journey of remembrance, reconnection, and embodiment of who they are, their essence, power, and truth by reawakening the power of their feminine energy, womb, and menstrual cycles. Join me each week to indulge in raw, unedited, and unfiltered topics to help women own and step into their divine feminine truth and become unshakable, unapologetic, and bold in who they truly are. Let's jump into today's conversation. Welcome to another episode of the Feminine Truth Podcast with your host, Mary Miranda. And today, it's going to be another solo episode. Right now, I was driving and there was this storm. And I usually get a lot of downloads, a lot of channeling, a lot of ideas come through when I'm driving. So I'm driving and I started just thinking of the power of being authentic of being in your truth and knowing who the hell you are like at the core you essence without all the conditioning programming belief system stories society whatever your parents uh taught you it's like who are you underneath everything and everyone what is your true essence and This came up because I have been thinking a lot when it comes to dating, how a lot of us don't really know who we are and therefore we're manifesting and attracting partners unconsciously because we are not in our true. We are not in our raw nature. We don't know what we stand for. We don't know what we desire. We don't know what we like, what we don't like. The qualities, our core values. We don't know how we want to feel in a connection with someone. How we want to feel about ourselves in that connection too. And we don't have clarity, right? So without clarity, it feels like foggy and the path to attract the partner or even manifest a, let's say money, manifest clients or whatever it is that um, you're in your desire, it's not going to be clear. So you are going to be attracting things based on your unconscious, based on your subconscious programming, which is your trauma, your core wounding, which is your unmet needs, which is like all this. Just imagine like you have all these little holes or gaps in your soul or in, in you per se. So when you meet someone that you feel so whole and complete or that person fulfills some type of need or for example you didn't feel worthy but as soon as you have a partner you your level of worthiness kind of like goes up right so in reality this person that came into your life is fulfilling or feeling that um gap or that little hole that it doesn't really exist but for you to think like to picture and visualize it so that person feels that gap or that hole or that that unmet need and you feel like this sense of worthiness or wholeness or completeness but as soon as that person leaves you are left feeling unworthy again so then you keep attracting partners based on that wound so of course you're gonna attract someone that makes you feel more unworthy toward the end and within the relationship so just pay attention what it is that you are currently experiencing in your reality what it is that you are attracting or what it is that you feel at this moment moment about yourself and just take an inventory and i think one of the hardest things for us to do is to take ownership and responsibility for our lives and for healing and for this saying you know what like oh my gosh like I still have to heal some core wounding from my childhood or I still have to heal the betrayal or I still have to heal trust issues or I still have to heal some trauma that happened to me or for example if you're like me that you left um abusive relationships on the mental, psychological, emotional spectrum, then you are responsible to heal that if you want to 
attract someone that it's at your the frequency that you desire at the level that you desire at the depth that you desire right and this is not even about attracting someone it's for you to feel whole and complete within yourself without anyone else so for me a lot of my journey has been like who is mary miranda who is mary miranda without the belief systems that she like inherited growing up and even this goes back to my ancestors my great grandma my grandma my feminine lineage the women in my lineage how they have been they mostly have been housewives which there's nothing wrong with it but when you I, I'm, I was born and raised in Mexico so a lot of the women in my culture and especially my lineage and where I come from the town where I come from women you know they aspire to be wives and raise children and take care of the house household and do that and if that like that fills you up then there's nothing wrong with that right because there's so many women that that is like the most beautiful goal they aspire to and that's completely fine for me I was always a little rebel rebellious where that I something didn't feel right that didn't feel right for me I was always a little one that never dreamt about getting married that never dreamt about having children until she was like 35 and so I never really had those dreams within myself but then I do remember like walking into the church once and you know how we have the saints um, I was raised Catholics and I remember looking at St. Jude or St. Peter I can't remember as I was walking in and I just remember thinking I wonder what my husband is going to look like <laughs> that's all I thought I didn't even think about marriage or anything I was just like I wonder what he's gonna look like and I just left it as that you know but I think it's just interesting because this journey for me has been a lot of who am I and when I came to the United States it was like identity like lost and I was so lost and confused I didn't know where if I belonged I didn't feel like I belonged here or in Mexico I felt so out of place and it's just been such a journey for me because it's the duality of of healing from as an immigrant as a first generation immigrant as someone that didn't speak the language as someone that it's in this country and I didn't feel I had a lot of rights and I didn't feel like I belonged here so it's been a lot of like who am I underneath everything the condition and the program in society being an immigrant being mexican um and and just navigating that and getting to my truth has been quite the journey and a lot of my family they they don't they're not fully supportive or accepting of of my path but they don't get in the way you know and i think they just learn to kind of just like leave me alone and for me it's like i care about having a relationship with each family member with my sister my older sister my older brother my parents for me that's the most important thing having a relationship with each of them and making sure my relationship is based on love compassion kindness and just like telling them how much I love them my nieces my nephews and it's slowly it's like showing them my truth who I am so they know I'm into spirituality they know I talk a lot about menstrual cycles I do my menstrual cycle rituals they know like little by little but it's taken a while because they knew a version of me that was unhealed from the past someone that was angry someone that was very codependent and um, in such toxic relationships someone that um, you know I didn't feel worthy I didn't love myself like they knew a different version of me so when I started doing the healing journey it was it just felt so off like how do I present this new version of me to my family who has known a different version of me that was not my best you know and so I have to do a lot of forgiveness work around the previous versions of myself and I had to come to terms that you know what I don't really need to show them my true self and be like hey hey this is what I believe now this is what I am I'm like I just have to sort of like embody all that I am today and slowly 
integrate them or slowly they're going to start seeing the changes. The transition has to be very organic, very natural. Like I don't have to go and give them a list of everything I believe and who I am now. And no, it's like, no, it has to feel so authentic and natural. It has to be that way. So slowly they have come to understand that I'm a Reiki master. I do a lot of energy healings. I, the, the things that I do, and it doesn't matter if they support me or not. What I care about is that they know me as a, as a sister, as a daughter, that they care about that I have a heart, a huge heart, that I love them, that I'm always going to be there. I am very reliable for my family, but I also have my boundaries. So it's been this journey of integrating me into my family and the my dynamics have been so beautiful because I don't get triggered anymore and when I do it's just very like I just bounce back super fast you know that the I guess the window between getting triggered and feeling happy again is so short that it's sometimes I just don't even notice it anymore because of the embodiment work and the embodiment that of who I am now that it's someone that it's like, okay, well, this trigger is here and this is a lesson. Let's see what this is about. And I look at it with curiosity. So I have been able to create really beautiful relationships with each family member in my family and my friends. And I still have a, a way to go, you know, and I'm just so excited because now it's like, oh my God, now I feel like I am the same way like I don't have to be I think like before especially if you resonate with a lot of my story and then you're the same you have been the same way before codependent and on the people pleasing the good girl syndrome we tend to be chameleons we tend to sort of adapt and be different with different people uh, because we don't know our truth we don't know our essence we don't know what we stand for we don't have boundaries so there's a lot of enmeshment going on so when I did the healing work and I was like no I'm gonna stand in my truth and my power I'm going to put boundaries I'm I'm gonna say no to the things that don't align with me I'm gonna say yes to the things that excite me and it's just been a lot of that it's just been a lot of um I feel like I am me like with my family I am me online I am me like when I'm with myself and you know and it's just like this journey of being a cyclical woman too and this journey of walking with all my emotions I'm a very sensitive woman <laughs> and I can be in my emotions so like you know I live a cyclical life I aligned with the moon and my menstrual cycle phases and it's just been such a beautiful journey of accepting all of me in my truth the days that I don't feel well and it's not like oh what can I do to feel good again no it's more like okay like let's I know this probably is not the way I desire to feel today, but how can we be okay with this? How can I love myself right now through this? And the self-love piece comes so strongly when you are having bad days, when you don't feel the best about yourself, when you are experiencing your luteal phase and you're more moody, you're more irritable. It's like, how can you show yourself grace, compassion, acceptance, and love? How can you show yourself you're there for you? You have your back. You're not going to abandon yourself. You're not going to bypass what you, your experience. How can you show up and embody being there for you no matter what you know so a lot of the things that I have been doing is just like how can I stand in my truth and stand up for who I am and integrate that in all areas of my life so I can't feel like I'm the same person because before I used to feel like like I said like a chameleon like I was like one person and it's not like I was trying to be fake. It's none of that. But I think a lot of times like when you are online and you have, you're an entrepreneur and you have a business and you're an introvert, you do have to bring yourself out to be an extrovert. You do have to show up and be on live video. I'm here on a podcast, right? You do have to put yourself out there. So like I, 
I'm also like like that type of person. Like I can be an extrovert when I desire to, when I feel so excited, but also when I don't feel more, when I feel more in like my cocoon, when I go more into my luteal phase of my cycle, I tend to be more introverted and I tend to go more in cocoon. And I still show up though. I still show up. And so a lot of times before, it used to be like, oh, I am forcing myself to show up and I have to be high Bible the time and I have to be this because that's the way I'm online and I have to be like that in my life. And now it's like, no, in my real life, I'm a cyclical woman. When I have my days that uh, according to my cycle or according to my energy, some days I feel very lethargic, I honor that. And I'm not going to show up online and I'm not going to force myself to be someone I am not because I don't want that image to or that energy to be placed on social media. And it's just it's you can feel it, right? You can feel the forcing, the pushing, the fakeness. So for me, that's all integrity is one of my biggest core values. And it's like, no, Mary, when you are not feeling the best, we are not going to force ourselves to go and be out there. And you have to give yourself permission to not do that. And you have to honor that you have to honor your rhythms, you have to honor that. So for example, if I have a program, and if I have a life call, I am going to show up for that, you know, but that's there's a difference, because that is a commitment. And I'm not going to show up for like 360 day Facebook Live, like that's for me, that for me does not resonate that for me me is not in integrity with what I believe that for me is like no what happens the days that I truly don't want to show up I'm not gonna go and force myself to do that right so and it's just more like how can I commit to this journey of being a cyclical woman who is in her truth who lives who lives every day it's living a life that it's in her true that honors what she desires that honors being a cyclical woman that honors being in her feminine energy but also in her masculine energy when she needs to that honors that she still has commitments and she's gonna get them done no matter what but at the same time she can she can just surrender into her emotions if she's not feeling well one day like for example right today is day five of my menstrual cycle right so this menstrual cycle has been a little painful because of stress that has happened in the past week. So of course, it's going to reflect on my menstrual cycle. And it's been like a lot of leaning back and just doing more of behind the scenes of my business and not showing so much um, on stories or on my timeline. And it's just been like honoring these days because the menstrual cycle is such, is such a sacred time in a woman's uh, life, you know, especially in her menstrual years, that for me, it's like, it's the most sacred time of the month for me. So I honor that. And it's an embodiment practice that I'm not going to go and push and force myself to be out there. When in reality, that's not what I do behind the scenes. And I want to stay true to that and, and with an integrity. So where I'm getting at with this whole thing <laughs> that I just started talking about so many things, it's that when you get to know yourself, when you get to know your truth, when you get to know your core values, what you believe in, what you stand for, what are your negotiables, non-negotiables, what you desire in a relationship with yourself, how you desire to feel in a relationship with yourself, how you desire to experience life, to remember your days, like what legacy you want to leave behind, you know, every day, like how do you want to remember today, tomorrow, how you want to remember today at the end of the day, you know, you start living your life differently you start being more mindful and conscious and intentional and therefore you are going to start attracting a different reality and this is where it comes to the dating or attracting someone or manifesting money or whatever it is that you're trying to your goal is it's that you are going to start attracting people that are within your core values within your frequency within your desires within also who are in such alignment with who you are and who see the truth of you and one of the biggest things I will ever ever give someone an advice on is be your true self in dating dating apps and the reason why is because the people the man 
or whomever you are attracted to, they are going to, the ones that don't resonate and align with your truth are going to fall off and they're not the right people for you and you get closer and closer to attracting your soulmate versus if you just start attracting people not knowing who you are and kind of like, let, let's say someone says, oh, I like baseball. And you're like, oh, I like baseball too. Oh, I like this. Oh my God, I like that too. When you really don't like that, it's you're going to start attracting relationships that are out of alignment with your authentic self because you don't know yourself and it's that leads to a lot of like people pleasing that leads to you doing things that are, don't feel good for you and that's how you start disconnecting from your truth from your intuition from your feminine energy from who you are and then you start living a life full of frustration full of empty you feel like empty and then you start getting resentful because this person keeps going to baseball games and you're tired and then he'll be like but you say you like baseball and you're like oh yeah i do like baseball and then now it's like oh by the way you have to be honest with this person and tell him you know what the only reason why i told you i like baseball is because you like baseball and it feels like you're like a puppet you know so like we want to get away from that energy from that energy of mimicking what the other person says this is why you have to get to know yourself you have to do the healing work to get to the truth of you to your essence to to your inner feminine power and your inner feminine power and also for men you know this is not just about being inner feminine power but i speak to women mainly but it's like the inner feminine power, it's like your womb power, your sacral power, your menstrual power, your intuition, you as a woman, who you are as a woman underneath everything. And you are going to start attracting a different reality. So when you are in your power, in your truth, like your life changes the way you feel about yourself changes and therefore your identity starts changing because you are your best version. You are living a life where you feel so fulfilled and excited and happy and the things that you attract to into your life are just going to bring you more of that of abundance, fulfillment, happiness, joy, pleasure. So get to the bottom of who you are. Remove all the layers that are not you remove all the conditioning the programming the stories the limiting beliefs the trauma the core wounding the unmet needs find a way to fulfill those unmet needs and that that work is done through child um inner child healing and if you are like i don't even know where to start i don't even know like how to start doing this start somewhere start healing your inner child start making a list of like what things you don't like what things you like like start getting into a deeply committed relationship with yourself so you can get to know who you are and if you need help i am so excited to say that my one-on-one coaching it's open for enrollment so if you need guidance with how to navigate to the path back to your inner power back to you back to your essence back to your truth back to like who you are at your core so you can stand and be unapologetic and be bold and just like show up as you and not be afraid that someone is not going to love you because you're like no the people that are for me my friends the relationship whatever the clients they are going to be attracted for with to me because of who i am and that is the most powerful thing when you start creating your life around who you are because you know yourself so well and if you desire to step into this type of medicine and be in this energy of embodying your inner feminine power your truth to align and use your menstrual cycle heal your womb because a lot of times a lot of the unprocessed trauma pain emotions and hurt in anger and resentment is storing your woman this is why a lot of women have a lot of menstrual cycle pain especially if you have stress oh my gosh like it is one of the biggest things that causes um the emotional stress that the stress that women go through and it just it imbalances your hormones and therefore it's going to affect your period and your menstrual cycle and the way you feel your mood and everything so you are not going to have this huge clarity on how to 
heal because you're gonna get brain fog you know because everything is connected like your womb is also connected when your gut is clean your hormones are like balanced in a way and there's this path also to your brain this this bi-directional connection between your gut and your brain and if everything is clear and the path is it's 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 like like out of any block in a way then you are going to be able to create such a better fulfilled life so send me a message send me i'm gonna put all the information on, on my i also have an application if you're like you know what i'm ready i want help i want guidance i need someone to help me get on this path get started because i don't like the life that i'm living i don't like li like creating a life out of out of not knowing who i am like being out of sync with who i am you know so like let's start creating a life that is in sync with our truth with our nature with our essence with our feminine power a life that where you are unapologetic where you can just walk into our room and own who you are and just just become this magnetic beautiful woman and being so i will be putting all the information in the show notes for my application for my one-on-one -on -one coaching but you can also reach me on social media on instagram on facebook i'm also going to put the links in the show notes so you can reach out to me but i would love to guide you on this journey back to reclaim and embody your inner feminine power your truth your nature your essence as a woman so you can start living and creating the life of your dreams so thank you so much for being here and i am so grateful for you and i will be seeing you on the next episode Thank you so much for being part of this conversation on the Feminine Truth Podcast. This podcast is for you, for me, for us, for the Feminine Collective. Thank you for spending your time and energy with us. I so, so, so appreciate it. Please, it would mean so much if you could share this in your Instagram stories, in your Facebook stories, or everywhere so this message gets spread and others can find this podcast and this conversation. And if you feel like someone needs to hear this message, please share with them. Um, I would be so grateful for you and let us know your thoughts, how this has helped you how you connected with this topic or how this has felt in your body and lastly if you feel the pull i would be immensely grateful if you could take the time to leave a review so more people can find my podcast and this conversation i'm sending you so much love and i'll see you on the next episode